Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, assalamu alaikum, wherever you are joining us from. My name is Katarzyna, I am a member of the MACFEST team. Welcome everyone to MACFEST 2023 and the Muslim Women's Arts Festival. We're still celebrating the International Women's Week with the theme Embrace Equity. Today with um, artists from um, Afghani women artists uh, joining us from Kabul. Uh, I'm sitting in Manchester, so hello from the UK. Please tell us where you're joining us from. Our host for today is Angel Angelika. Angelika is sitting in Germany, in Stuttgart. Uh, we've got these fantastic speakers here, um, women's artists, so please send us your comments and ask questions. On behalf of MacFest, thank you everyone for your donations. Uh, you help us very much to organize these fantastic events. Most of them are free, so please join us in the future again. And follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and on TikTok. And use our hashtag, spread honey, not hate. Over to you, Angelika. Um, good morning to everyone um, watching us from the United States. Good afternoon to all those joining us in Europe. And good evening uh, to our artists uh, in Afghanistan and uh, our guests uh, joining us from India to watch. Um, I feel very honored um, to be given the opportunity to host this webinar. I got to know Kesra in 2008 um, because uh, then her story, A Pair of Jeans, became mandatory reading for A-level students in the southwest part of Germany. So we worked together on a textbook publishing her story. That's how we met. I've organized uh, many workshops for her in Germany at my school, at teacher training college Stuttgart. And um, I've visited uh, her in Manchester many times, sometimes with friends, with my parents. So I'm, I feel very honored um, that I get the chance uh, to host this webinar today. So thanks a lot, Kesra. Now, uh, let me introduce myself briefly. I teach at Teacher Training College Stuttgart, uh, Seminar Stuttgart. Uh, there I'm responsible for the Project Center of International School Exchange. So it is my task to promote international exchange programs between, between German schools and uh, schools in countries all around the globe. So we have an emphasis on India, Israel, you at the US, and of course, all other European countries. So we help teachers in schools to set up and organize exchange programs across the globe. So um, I've, I myself have always been interested in foreign languages and uh, different cultures. And I'm also interested in how different religions see and interpret the world. So I studied in the United States in the 90s. Uh, I've organized exchange uh, with the US in 2003. And since 2011, I've organized multiple exchange programs with uh, India for schools, um, for university students, and for teacher trainees. So I've um, been to Delhi, Rajasthan, Punjab, and the Himalayas many times. I have not been uh, to Afghanistan, but uh, I know that Afghanistan is um, very similar uh, to to India in certain respects. So I'm 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 very I feel privileged to be hosting this webinar today and to learn more about uh, um, expression, uh, freedom of expression through art by the four. Um, artists Sahara, Savari, Sadaf Danish, Mursal Ahmadi, and Sama, Sanam Asimi today. Thanks a lot for having me. Uh, now, first of all, I would like to introduce our special guest today, Chris Sakarabani from New York. Uh, he has 15 years of experience in intercultural and interfaith programs management, 
Um, he serves as the executive director of the Foundation for Ethnic Understanding in New York, FFEU. He has been an advisor to MECFAST for many years, and he's also been a program manager and has uh, organized the World Congress, Congress of Imams and Rabbis for Peace, together with the French Foundation Homme de Parole. And he has also worked um, as a consultant for UNESCO. And um, he's a co-executive -exec producer of the award-winning documentary, Nobody Wants Us. Maybe some of you have seen it. It tells the story of Jewish refugees escaping the Nazi invasion of Western Europe in 1940. So welcome to you. Chris, um, would you like to say a few words about yourself, please? Thank you so much, uh, dear Angelica. Uh, hi, everybody. Greetings from New York. Um, I am thrilled and honored to join you today. Um, my organization, the Foundation for Ethnic Understanding, which is a global address for Muslim Jewish relations, has been a, a supporter of MACFEST since its inception. And as a proud advisor of MACFEST, uh, let me express first my deep appreciation to Kaisra Sharaz, whom I greatly admire, and a dedicated uh, here, especially Katazina and, and Steve. Uh, you have done a sensational job years after years in putting together programs and, and events that demonstrate the diversity of Islam and unite people of all faith and backgrounds. And even today, again, we gathered keynote speakers and attendees from all over the world. The festival, as it will be shown again today, is a platform that enables and empowers the voices of different people, young, senior, women, men, Muslims, and non-Muslims. This is a special event today. Uh, in March, uh, we typically honor women, uh, whether it's Women Day, Women Week, or uh, Women Month, Women's Month. And today our MACFEST event celebrates Afghani women using arts as an expression of freedom. And in this spirit, uh, we all look forward to hearing from our remarkable panelists about their personal and artistic journey. Over to you, Angelica. Okay, thanks a lot, Chris. Now, um, I would like uh, to introduce to you Imran Ula Kakar, who will serve as a translator today. Uh, he's also from Afghanistan and he's in Germany at the moment. Um, he has, um, he will introduce himself now brief, briefly as well. So over to you, Imran. Introduce myself. Uh, first of all, uh, good evening to my friends and colleagues uh, and participants who are joining the meeting from Afghanistan. And a uh, good day, uh, afternoon to my colleagues uh, uh, joining the meeting from uh, London. And good to talk to everyone. <laughs> and uh, my name is Imranullah uh, uh, Kakar. Uh, I'm from Afghanistan, uh, and I'm joining the meeting uh, from Germany right now. Uh, I have been working for uh, peace, women's rights, and human rights in Afghanistan since 10 years. Mm, but uh, since Taliban has taken over Afghanistan, we established the Afghan Women uh, Artist Network. Now I'm working as a communication officer for the Afghan Women Network, for the Afghan Women Artist Network. Uh, so I'm really happy and I would like to thank you from the uh, Ms. Pesra or uh, Muslim World Arts uh, Foundation based in the UK and from all of you to give the opportunity to the Afghan women and girls who need your support uh, in the current situation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Im Thank you very much, Imran. Thank you. And uh, we wish you all the best. Okay, then um, finally, um, we will get to the um, four women artists who will show their work today. Uh, Sahara Savari, 
Sadaf Danish, Mursal Ahmadi, and Sanam Asimi. So um, first of all, I would like to give um, uh, the uh, Sahara Savari the chance to speak about her artwork. Um, you will see the slides at the same time. So all of them will tell you how they got into painting, why they have started in uh, painting, uh, what it means to be a female artist in Afghanistan. So we'll start with uh, Sahara Savari from Kabul. Welcome. Greeting to all of you. I hope everything is going well for you. I'm, a, I'm an Afghan artist girl named Sahra Sarwari, and I'm joining you from Kabul. Being a part of this event is a big pleasure for me, and it's worth to me a lot. I want to thank from all of you for inviting me, especially Ms. Kaisara Shahraz and our coordinator, Mr. Imranullah Kakar. I started painting and working in art section two years ago when Taliban came to Afghanistan and take over the government. Uh, everything was going bad and the only hobby that I can choose was painting and, and, and it helped me a lot. And I want to say about my, uh, about my artworks that um, this artworks uh, that you see is uh, because I love this place very much and it gives me a meaning of unity of Muslims of the world, I created this artwork. Uh, and the, you see the picture of Mecca. Mecca is this place where Muslims from all over the world come to worship. And um, another artwork. As you can see, it's a girl. And I've gone and you can see like the uh, model of an Afghan girl. Uh, that want uh, and that and in this artwork, I want to say that Afghan girls only only want to live in tranquility and pursue their education, but unfortunately, they face to violence every time. Another artwork, please. This work is a symbol of great poet and personality personality of Islamic world, who is known as Maulana Balhi that um, uh, a lot of people know uh, him who was a big man in Muslims world. Can you share another artwork? And in this artwork, it shows the state of a woman who migrate. We have many examples of this phenomenon in world who face all kinds of problems on the way to migration but accept the risk in order to build a good life for themselves and their children. And you can see uh, a lot of meaning in an artwork. And that was Angelica. That's it? Yeah. Okay. Um... Then we can move on to the next artist, Sadaf Danish. Please um, show your artwork. I can see it, yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon. Welcome. I hope you're fine. I'm Sadaf Danish from Afghanistan and joining events from Iran right now. And I'm so happy today for participating to the Afghan Women Artist Group. And uh, I have to do thank from dear Kesra uh, and uh, Mr. Cocker for giving us the opportunity to show our painting today. Thank you. And uh, I will say you about when I uh, started painting. Um, um, I was born in Iran country at 2001. I could not go to school and study like others. But, uh, and when I see my peers went to school, I used to look them with regret. My childhood was full of sadness. And I was a depressed girl and I used to paint. Uh, 
I used to paint and image myself at the school. That time was when I began painting. And the reason that uh, they didn't allow me to learn uh, was because just my nationality, because I was an Afghan girl. And at that time, um, Afghans haven't any value for them. So we come back to Afghanistan. And I started my education in Afghanistan. However, women's education was not included in the society, but I stand and fight against my rights and and dear and the only one who supports me was my father. And now, I, uh, and now I want to say about my activities before coming Taliban to the Afghanistan. Kunduz province was the first city of Afghanistan which Taliban took over. Before it, Kunduz was not a safe city too. There was always war around on. And that time I was working on the Afghanistan and Cultural Asia Association and Radio, and I was a civil society activi activist and head of an art group. Um, an art group, and I created this group to improving our skills because there was not any classes or someone learners. Um, and nobody cared about art. The most member of this group was uh, female, besides improving our own skill, we paint on the wall city of and um, to show people, to show people whatever we want, like the women's right, like the right of education for girls, like the message and benefits of peace. It was, um, and also, it was very dangerous for us. It was a dangerous work, but. Um, uh, we thought it's the best way. It's the best way when the ears of society are deep. So how we can um, show ourselves? So we can show our uh, our rights by painting on the walls, and we hold several painting exhibition. Um, and um, there was about two thousand pa uh, paintings that was in the exhibition. And if I have time, I want to say my activities uh, after coming Taliban. May I? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Um, after coming Taliban to the Afghanistan, my family sent me to the Iran. Okay. Uh, they sent me to Iran country to save me. When my province fell down to the hands of Taliban, I couldn't stay because during painting on the walls, I, uh, there were unknown person that have warned me several time and uh, told me to do not paint on the walls again. I was very worried because I lost my best friend who was only seven, mm, 70 years old. She had uh, only 17 years old Taliban killed her just only because she was vaccinator, just because she was an active girl, and just because she was a brave girl and stood up against absurd and cruel thoughts. I never forgot that. I never forgot her speech. She was saying that I want to be a woman's rights activist in the future. But, uh, but she uh, slept forever. She slept forever under the grave with unreached wishes. Uh, but today we have also brave girls like Habiba Sharifi. She is um, the only one who protested alone against our rights at 8th of March and war province in Afghanistan. Because right of education for girls. This is um, all girls question from Taliban. And my question too, why are women not allowed to study? It is all girls question. Why? 
why we can't study. And uh, now I want to speak about my painting that you can see on the slide. Um, she is Sharbat Gol, is an Af uh, and she is an Afghan woman about um, 40 years uh, ago during the bombing of Afghanistan, the enemies attacked her village and uh, killed her uh, parents. And as a result, the uh, blessing had to flee to a refugee camp in Pakistan. And in 1985, American photographer, um, I think it's uh, her name is Steph, Steph Makari, photographed uh, Sharbat Gol, um, Shar a Sharbat Gol picture, um, an Afghan girl living in an Afghan refugee camp in Pakistan, Sharbat Gol picture uh, in National Geographic magazine had become world famous. And uh, her picture at the um, age of 12 with green eyes made her famous. And uh, that um, this image become a symbol of the suffering of the Afghan people, especially Afghan girls. And uh, another painting. Yeah, um, this is the painting of Solar. About two years ago, when the war began between the Afghan government and Taliban, the moral of the soldier was very, very loud. So uh, I decided to pen this picture on the wall to support them. Um, and I do it with my group. Mm -hmm. I mentioned that I was creating a group um, in uh, Kunduz that uh, most of uh, them was female. And by painting this picture on the walls, we were very, very encouraged by the people. And when the soldiers uh, passed by us, they were so happy and proud of them. And also that um, it was a big risk for us. It was very, very dangerous for us. After that working, uh, there was an unknown person warned us about our painting. And uh, so it was our last painting uh, on the Kunduz wall cities. And another painting. Okay, uh, this is the painting of a woman who want to uh, escape from darkness to her own colorful world. You can see, I paint this um, picture with a lot of colors. And another picture. Yes. Um, this is a simple painting on fabric that you can see. Um, I wanted to show the benefits of peace and the bed of war. And I think it's a paint that have ability to convey its meaning uh, so easily. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, Sadaf, um, for your uh, presentation. Actually, there are some questions from the chat. So um, I don't know whether I should ask you now because people are interested. Um, what motivates you as an artist to continue? Because it is so difficult for you. Okay. I said that I, when I started my painting, it was in my childhood. When I couldn't um, say my speech, uh, then I paint that. When I couldn't speak, uh, couldn't uh, say my a speech to people and I paint that. Uh, so 
when I see girls in Afghanistan who stand uh, to, uh, for their rights, uh, and uh, and it helped me to uh, improve my skills to be with them, and it's all for me. Okay, thank you very much, Sada. Next, uh, Morsa Ahmadi will present her artwork to us. Uh, hello, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Morsal. My last name is Ahmadi. I'm connected, uh, connecting uh, with you from uh, Kabul, Afghanistan. I am uh, 20 years old. I'm, uh, I was a graphic design uh, student. Uh, but now uh, the universities and uh, schools are banned and we are uh, not uh, allowed to study. Mm. Uh, I'm a uh, painter. Ever since the university were uh, closed to girls, I uh, draw my paintings at home. Uh, I hope one day uh, I will be able to go to university and uh, continue uh, my studies. Before the Taliban uh, came to Afghanistan, I was uh, working in a clothing uh, design company uh, because I wanted to become a professional fashion designer. I liked uh, this job very much, uh, but I now uh, work from uh, home. Uh, I draw uh, some paintings uh, because I want to express the sadness and pain of uh, Afghan girls with my paintings. Mm, uh, because they can't study and uh, uh, work. They sit in uh, their houses like a prisoner. Uh, they can't go to the parks and other places. Yeah. Yes. The situation in Afghanistan is actually uh, the same as you see in the news. Women should not speak, uh, women can't study, women cannot work. Everything is about the Afghan, Afghan women. Mm -hmm. I think we can't even imagine uh, sitting in Europe or in the West, uh, the sort of sort of lives you uh, have to lead uh, as women in Afghanistan since the Taliban took over. Yes. Uh, can you show my uh, uh, drawings, paintings? Next, Steve. Uh, yes, it's there. It's on the screen. There are more on there. Okay. Uh, in this painting, uh, this is my uh, drawing for Afghan girls uh, who can't uh, study uh, and uh, their dreams is uh, sheltered under the burqa. Yeah. Yes. Uh, this is also uh, in this means uh, that are you still there? Yeah. I think um, more style? Yes. Okay, then continue. Uh, Imran? Imran, maybe you need translation? Mursal? Yes. Okay. Would you like to continue in English or you want Imran to translate for you? Uh, Imran, uh, translate me. Uh, Imran, where are you? Uh, Imran to translate her speech, I think. So therefore, uh, somebody else can translate for her. So uh, Morsal wants to say that this picture uh, or this uh, artwork belongs to that uh, the women who are in Afghanistan should wear 
ورقة it's called like uh, unprofessional uh, hijab in uh, Taliban uh, burn them uh, to um, to without uh, burqa and without uh, hijab they cannot go out from the house and uh, in everywhere yeah so okay next what would you like to say about this uh, painting more style uh, this painting is uh, show the uh, uh, British and Afghan uh, war and uh, when did it can you uh, when did you paint it and uh... I painted this uh, painting uh, two years ago okay and uh, it means the uh, 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 British and Afghan war and... Uh, so it happened before the Taliban took over? Yes, yeah, before the Taliban. Okay, and um, I can see lots of violence in this picture. And yes. uh, now maybe you can say how um you felt during during this war as opposed to how you feel now under the rule of the taliban uh, uh, can you repeat please um i mean this um painting shows the war in afghanistan that that was happening before the taliban took over so how did you feel then and how do you feel now under Taliban rule? Uh, I, uh, before the uh, Taliban came to Afghanistan, uh, I have uh, work, uh, I, I had work and uh, I was a clothing, uh, I was a fashion designer in a, uh, clothing uh, design company but uh, after uh, what so you had to stop yes uh, but i uh, now i uh, work from home uh, we can't uh, go to the outside of home uh, because uh, the taliban uh, don't uh, this is mm. yeah i understand but in a, in a way maybe you are lucky that you can actually as an artist you can work from home that it is possible thank you yeah so any other painting you would like to show more side oh here it comes uh, okay yes <laughs> Now tell us about this painting. And this is a woman that uh, uh, Would you like Imran to translate for you? Yes. Imran? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Bugün şuma. Yani in yazani az kadar مقابل همه مشکلات مبارزه میکنه و با و هیچ وقت تسلیم نمی شود همه قسم the picture shows that the Afghan women uh, faced with uh, relations and uh, difficult problems but uh, the Afghan women uh, will not forgive and they are they have been struggled for their rights Okay. Okay. I like this uh, painting very much, actually, because it uh, shows the uh, two sides of um, being a woman in Afghanistan, that how you see yourself, but how society sees you. Do you feel, uh, yeah, you have a sort of a double, double role. So, 
So would you like to say something about this, the two roles? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. میشه بگین که یعنی وقتی که دختران افغان در زیر برقه هستند و آنها آرزوهای خود را وقتی که پیش آینه می باشن یعنی اینجا آرزوهای خود دیده است زیر برقه یا چادری این قسم یک چیز که درس خوانده نمی تانند می خواهند به درس بخوانند Marcel uh, says that uh, the, my this artwork shows that the women and girls of Afghanistan under the burqa mean unprofessional hijab. Mm -hmm. uh, they lost their all hopes. But when they look at the mirror, uh, <laughs> they will uh, look some hope for the future. But under the burqa, I mean under the unprofessional hijab, they lost their hopes. Okay. That's, I think it's a very powerful picture. And um, yeah, it shows you as a college uh, or university graduate on the uh, one hand uh, in the mirror, but um, you have to hide all this uh, under your new identity, um, under this, um, under your burqa uh, since the Taliban has taken over. This is how I see it. Okay. Go on. And uh, this is the uh, Afghan cultural uh, culture uh, dress because of this. I uh, okay. drew it. Okay. The, so this is the original uh, Afghan dress. Um, yes. Okay. Very beautiful. Okay. Okay. Go on. Um, I can see the same lady again in this um, painting. Um, and, uh, this is. Uh, begin. I am a Kabliya. It's the same uh, picture that uh, she told before. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's a, a, a geographical map uh, of Afghanistan. He put some pictures in some uh, heritage pictures uh, inside the map of Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. It's, it's um, amazing. Yes. Very, yeah, very powerful painting. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And could you explain this painting to us, Morsal? Uh, this is uh, Afghan uh, uh, girls that uh, they are in uh, the home uh, like a prisoner. Okay. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Please, next uh, painting. Uh, this painting, uh, it means uh, that Afghan girls are killed on their way to school. Yeah. Actually, it was uh, on the news a lot here, too. So. Great. That is the, that's the last slide. Yeah. It's a very powerful picture too because it's to me it looks like the head of the woman is destroyed like she is not allowed to think anymore any other paintings you would like to show Mosal or anything else you would like this to finish it. yeah i'm just asking it's make sure. it. yeah okay Okay, then thanks a lot, Morsal, for your presentation. Yeah.
Now um, we have a fourth artist, Sanam Asimi, and um, she will show her art to us now. Assalamu alaikum, everyone, and Welcome. good afternoon. I am Sanam Azimi, 22 years old, from Afghanistan, and I living in Kabul. I can too. I can go to university. I and I buried my dreams. The only way I can break the silence and uh, sadness is my art. I was never disappointed because a woman is a true hero and completer of a society. I am very grateful to Ms. Kaisara Shahraz and Mr. Kakar for giving us this opportunity to display and the works we create here. And we are not uh, forgetting uh, it. My paintings are pieces. Since the Taliban occupied Afghanistan and I no longer hold exhibitions because according to the Taliban, face painting is a great sin and, uh, and they can put an uh, end to it and women are prisoners. <clears throat> Would you like us? Yeah, okay. Would you like to explain this painting to us? Sanam? Yes, uh, please, Emran, translate. Yes, I'm here. Okay, Emran. good. دوختران <laughs> May I? Sure. Uh, Ms. Sanam said that uh, this picture is the uh, shoes. There are two uh, girls uh, who are uh, on the way to school before uh, uh, they from the school. Yeah, I think I can, maybe I'll repeat it because the yeah, hopes. Okay, so the connection was, yeah. Imran, yeah, your connection is a bit lost. So Imran is saying that what I understood that it is uh, two Afghani girls on their way to school, happy, <laughs> happily laughing before uh, the Taliban Ban took over and they were no longer allowed to go to school. Go on, Sanam. Yes. What would you like to say about this painting? و این تصویر هم زمان که تمام شهرهای افغانستان اشغال شد توسط طالبان فقط کابل مانده بود و بعد از اینکه کابل هم اشغال شد از طرف طالبا به سربازهای افغانستان هیچ امیدی نماند یعنی دست از مبارزه دیگه کشیدن و نتونستن در مقابل طالبان مبارزه کنند این تصویر هم قسم یک معنا بود May I translate? Sure, go ahead. Thank you for jumping in.
Hello? Uh, do I translate what she sure, said? Sure. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, our sister said that when all uh, province, uh, province of Afghanistan fell down to the hands of Taliban and uh, the capital of Afghanistan that is Kabul, just um, it was the uh, last uh, province that uh, fell out fell down to the hands of Taliban and the soldiers don't have any uh, wishes and they give up and this is and this picture can um, can vary its meaning so easily you can see uh, he is uh, there is a man and uh, like a soldier and um, the paper there is a right hand Kabulam, my Kabul. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Very sad. Yes. Very emotional. Thank you. Welcome. So, Sam, the Sweden. Yeah. Yes. The Sweden as a Yektonisha Muziki, Hamli Kedar coach, Thread Kire. یک تصویر خود یک دانش آموز است این تصویر نیست که یعنی خودم کشیده باشم خودم رسم کردیم ولی شخصش یعنی یک تصویر یک دختری است که بعد از حمله که در کاد شد زنده برآمد ولی زخمی تصویر همو است دوی؟ Sure. Oh, thank you. Uh, our sister said that uh, this painting is from a girl, uh, Afghan girl, when um, there happened uh, at attack and uh, and Kaj, and Kaj is a place for studying, and uh, she she is bloody. You can see on the uh, on the picture, and she is um, alive now. But uh, I don't know, you know, about uh, about Kaj when um, Taliban um, when Taliban attack on the Kaj. Okay, very powerful too. It is Wilhelm as. مشخص است از زنان افغانستان یعنی به هر شیوه که اینا اگر حجاب کنن یا که برقه بپوشن یا همچنان هیچ برقه و حجاب نکنن مویشان معلوم شوه یا نشوه سه حالت است که در هر سه حالت به اینا سنگ خورده یعنی شکستن یعنی زنان افغانستان در هر حالتی که اینجا زندگی کنن بازم برویشان سنگ خورده یعنی حق زندگی حقشان درست برشان داده نمیشن ویل یو ترانسلیت اگن؟ یس ویر is three women one is without hijab uh, another is two i think and the third one is uh, with bokra mm -hmm. and uh, and third uh, states uh, the the enemy uh, have cruel with them and didn't uh, give them their rights and third states Mm, and we don't know what uh, we have to do. We do hijab, we wear hijab, we, or we don't have, uh, or we don't uh, have hijab. And third states, uh, the uh, the cruel is with us. Okay, that's also very powerful, I think. And there's another one. Yes. Uh, it has with him as a Kodak Don Shamozab one has a Ktobe Deriba Distish has. Well, 
زخمی همچنان در تصویر اگر شما میبینین روحش پرواز کده دیگه حمله که در یک مکتب صورت گرفته بود کودک افغان دانش آموز هست Okay. Yep, he is he is a child student when uh, a school uh, the enemy attacked uh, to a school and um, he was learning uh, his native language Dari. Um, the enemies killed him and his soul is flying. You can see uh, mm -hmm. on the picture easily. Thank you. Okay, that's also a very impressive, I think. And in this case, it, it's a male student, isn't it? Or is it a girl? No, it's, uh, he's a boy. Yeah, he's a boy. And yes. it, yeah. Okay. And um, it's our cultural dress for men. You can see on the picture. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Mm-hmm. Okay, anything else you would like to, yeah, go on, Sanam, yeah. If the film is a car, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. It's just a painting uh, for improving her skills. She have drawn it and painted. Uh, you can see uh, there is uh, eyes of a uh, girl and another from cat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Good. It's <laughs> اسم اثر آزادی هست یک دختر هست با موهای باز بدون هجاب و کبوتر هم به معنای آزادی هست کلا اسم اثر من آزادی است اوکی یو کان سی اون دی پیکچر دیر از ا گرل The, and her hands is big one and uh, the name of its uh, painting is freedom mm -hmm. yeah it's also um very powerful yes. yeah yeah great so go on sanam uh, yes um we have a uh, and it's just for improving her skills and okay. painting okay yes. okay anything any other painting you would like to show to us That was the last slide. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for sharing um, your painting paintings with us, all four of you. I think it was like a <laughs> digital, um, you can say, di digital exhibition with you as the guides of your own paintings. So thank you very much for this. Now... Um, We'll discuss um, the questions that have come up in the chat um, and also some questions I have thought of. And all of you can just jump in, okay? Any four of you. Um, so one question I, I would like to ask is how does um, being a, a woman in Afghanistan affect not only your lives, uh, but your paintings uh, as well. I think Sahara maybe. 
you can answer this question? Yeah, I can answer. Uh, I can say to you that a vulnerable uh, condition right now, particularly those who are artists, most restrictions were placed on us female after the Taliban took control of the government. They closed all educational center, which profoundly affected our development and mentality. They closed all avenues of advancement for girls. But I can say with pride that the Afghan girls preserved each one discovery, each one discovery a way to advance and offer others access to their voices. As an example, I can tell you about my sister. Please. Mm, yeah. Please do tell us about your sister. My sister stopped going to school for almost two years ago because Taliban banned the schools. She was depressed at the beginning, but she didn't give up. And despite that, she starts writing poetry to improve, to improve, improve herself. And if I talk about the art sector, in the period before the Taliban, art had just found its place among the people. People valued art and artists and appreciated them. But in the current situation, art and artists, especially if, uh, if they are girls, have no value. Mm -hmm. First of all, the government of Afghanistan uh, that you know they are Taliban, they are not very interested in art and their only concern is how women appear in society. Uh, the people of Afghanistan are facing so many problems that in Current, uh, current situation um, that they can they don't have time to think about an art and artists and this is very depressing. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's all. Okay, maybe someone else would like to speak about this question. Mosan, maybe. Does the internet help you um, to cope with the situation? I mean, I, I understand that you're not allowed to leave your house, but does the internet help you to work as artists? Sahara? Uh, yes, the only way that we can raise our voice to the world is internet like this exhibition, it will help us a lot to feel that uh, people can hear our voices, our situation, and uh, they know what we, what we like living li right now. Yeah. And I understand that it is very dangerous for you uh, to participate in this webinar even. That's, uh, why you you don't show yourselves uh, you only show your art and um so is are such webinars the only way uh, people can see your art or do you sometimes get the opportunity to invite people to your house to to show your art too Uh, I think the if we make exhibition is in our houses, it's also danger for us. If they know about it, they will punish uh, us, and uh, it's very dangerous. The only way is that we can show our artworks online. Okay, that is uh, very, very, very sad. I think because I, I can imagine as an artist, uh, you want to show your art to others. Uh, I mean, what's the purpose of being an artist if nobody sees your art? I think this must be kind of frustrating too. Yeah, it's like that. And I don't know, Is do you have any 
uh, possibility to show your art abroad in another country? Is that possible? If someone help us to do that, we will do it. But uh, in, inside the Afghanistan, it is not possible that and we don't have any opportunity. Okay, I'm really, I'm really, really sorry about this. It must be uh, devastating for you because, um, I mean, in your lifetime, you have uh, experienced uh, a different Afghanistan too, even though there was war, but you were not so confined as women. So I really hope that the situation will change again for you. And uh, so that you can have uh, a future in Afghanistan, not only as artists, but uh, as women. So can you just, um, I mean, to our Western audience, can you describe how you spend your day? How, uh, just describe a typical day. Um, because we know you're not allowed to leave your house. So, um, how do you spend your day? How do you keep in touch um, with uh, friends? Just, yeah, from getting up to going to bed, what do, what do your days look like? And how does art, your art fit into this um, day? Every day is same for us, <laughs> like being at home, not going outside, not showing ourselves in society, not talking about them. We do the same thing every day, being at home. So just describe a typical day, your typical day, Sahara. Um, I do like uh, I um sit with my family we talk about something and sometimes i do paintings to make myself happy the only way that i can uh, pass my time is painting mm -hmm. and sometimes uh, we go to outside for 10 or 15 minutes and come back to home for um, staying safe Okay. And when you go outside uh, for those 10 to 15 minutes, do you uh, need male company or can you go alone or with your mother maybe? Yeah, with, with my mother. If we go alone, they will see. They told us that you can't go uh, um, outside the home alone. Please go to your home. Or uh, they say uh, we are burqa. And that's like, okay. Uh, Angelica, we do have some questions in the chat. Yeah, I can see it. Um, There's one um, materials. How do you manage okay. to get your painting and other materials without compromising your safety? Good question. Maybe I'll repeat it. Um, so how do you manage to get the material for painting without putting yourself in, in danger? So you need paint, you to buy paint, uh, brushes, paper. As I said, we go with our mother or father and buy them and come to home back. Okay. Then I can see um, there's another question in the chat. Um, actually, someone is uh, suggesting to you that you should find work abroad doing illustration for foreign companies like Indian or Chinese companies. So is that an option for you? Could yes, it's the best option, but mm -hmm. I, unfortunately, I want to say you that they don't allow um, girls uh, travel to abroad alone but you could do it online i think through telephone internet facetime 
Uh, yes, I think it is the best opportunity for girls uh, to do online uh, in the home. And I think uh, girls uh, don't have uh, any problem with this uh, work. And it's uh, the best opportunity for girls to do uh, this work in the home. And there is not any problem with online working because uh, nobody know about that. Okay, good. So you can, uh, it can be done secretly, so to speak. You're free, in a way, free uh, online. You, sorry. Go ahead. I uh, told that we can uh, do that secretly and nobody uh, can uh, know that, but that what, uh, that what uh, we do. And it's not danger for girls if uh, this opportunity give us. Okay, that's good to know. And I, I also saw in the chat uh, previously that someone asked about homeschooling. Um, since you're not allowed uh, to leave the house and you, you talked about your sister too. So is homeschooling an option for you, girls in Afghanistan? Uh, if someone uh, do that secretly, it's, it's a good job. But um, Taliban have told everybody uh, uh, do that, uh, your um uh, a school at home and the Taliban warned them that uh, do not do that and if uh, it be secretly I think uh, we can uh, go to the school at home but if the Taliban know that I don't know what will they do mm -hmm. but if you're for example um your, uh, I mean, um, imagine you have a younger sister or, and she's not allowed to go to school, then I imagine you can teach her or your parents can teach her. Of course, it's not the same as going to school, but is that how you help yourselves? Uh, she was Sahara's sisters. Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. No problem. So do you learn from your siblings or your parents? Uh, uh, can you repeat again your question? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, you're no longer allowed to go to school. So um, I imagine that maybe a sister, elder sister or brother or parents, they can teach you at least some subjects or some. Yes, so. Yeah. Yes. Yes, of course, but when uh, someone don't have uh, parents who have uh, learned it or uh, sisters and brothers who have not learned it, they, what they do? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, someone pointed out that it's like China during the Cultural Revolution, study secretly at home, so you... Maybe that's a bit of a consolation to you that you're not the only um, country. Then um, someone asked, can someone teach through Telegram? Maybe. Oh, yes, of course. Um... Okay. Yes, of course. Uh, if there was, if if there uh, was someone to teach us uh, by Telegram, it's also uh, opportunities. And I think uh, there is uh, a lot of person that do that. And uh, right now, maybe some persons learn by Telegram. Okay. Then I have another question. I mean, of course, your situation is worst as a women artists, I think. But what about male artists? Do they have the, the same freedom they used to have um, before Taliban came? Or can you describe their situation in comparison to yours? Male artists? Do they suffer 
also, but in a different way, maybe. Maybe someone can translate. Imran maybe can explain that. Imran, what's the situation like for male artists at the moment? Uh, can I say? Yeah, please. Right now, uh, for female or uh, male, there is not work or uh, they can't uh, painting right now and they need hope they need wishes to uh, to do and to push their painting but when they don't have any wishes they don't have any uh, hope how uh, they can paint for what they can uh, they can paint uh, and i think the taliban uh, don't allow for men or women to paint Okay. Because uh, they think the painting is haram. Horror? Haram. Haram, okay, forbidden. Yes. Uh, they uh, say that um, the painting is haram and our uh, dean, uh, and that's why women or men to draw or painting um, but it's not a correct word uh, just they don't want to afghan girls afghan boys uh, to improve their self okay and it is no matter what kind of um painting all all painting is haram no matter what is depicted uh, they say that uh, just uh, don't uh, paint the um, persons. Um, uh, however, uh, if uh, you draw something that uh, it has soul, it's haram. But if you draw a tree, draw a home, it's no matter. Okay. Yes. I think this goes um, back to certain tradition of Islam, as far as I know, that you don't depict the uh, animals or humans, so they are for. It's not correct. They want just. Uh, they just don't want Afghan improve. Okay. Um, so someone's asking from the chat: um, Can you use Afghan symbols and calligraphy? uh to do your painting is that possible maybe someone can translate that was on the chat uh so yes mm -hmm. we have artists that do that mm -hmm. yes there is a lot of girls that uh do all the things that our friends said on the comments on the chats um, and every kind of uh, painting our uh, artists can do. Okay, so someone's asking about geom uh, geometry also, Is would that be allowed? Geometrical patterns? I couldn't catch. Um, uh, maybe someone can translate. Geometry is allowed, like not um, representing anything in particular, but just patterns or. May I? Sure. Yes, regarding the geometry, I would like to say yes. Uh, uh, of course, in school and institutions, uh, uh, there are the boys and uh, boys who are studying school. They are allowed to uh, working on geometry. Okay. 
but uh, it's not a lot for women and girls. Okay, okay. I must truly say, I um, I feel um, I'm on on the one hand, I'm really impressed by all all the artwork you're doing. Uh, you're very very uh, cora courageous young women, and um, we appreciate all the dangers you're taking just to participate in this webinar. And at the same time, I also feel um, a lot of empathy for you. And I feel very sorry that you um, have to live in such um, a situation where you can't really express yourselves and uh, you can't really be free. And that's uh, something we always take for granted, I think. And we don't even think about it here in the West. So, yeah, I'm 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 following the chat, and um, I'm trying to figure out if there are uh, any other questions. But um, actually, it's been uh, marvelous talking to you and meeting all of you. And I feel very um, actually, it's I understand that you cannot show yourselves, but um, I would have liked. Um, to see you on the screen so I, I can really thank you in a better way and um, um, appreciate and talk to you in a better way but um, of course I understand that it is not possible so yeah it's been amazing to see your artwork and of all four, four of you so thank you so much uh, for sharing it with us and um for making this webinar possible. So, um, yeah, I don't know, maybe Chris, um, would you like to come up on the screen again to thank the artists as well? Um, yes, Angelica. Um, I feel the same as you, uh, Angelica. Uh, I, at first I was, I mean, I'm still speechless, to be honest. Um, I knew that this one beaner would be special. Um, again, I, I can only thank you, Sahra, Sanam. Um, I mean, all of you, uh, Sadat, Mosal, for coming, uh, Imran as well, for coming here today. Um, because I shared in, 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 in the chat that uh, you are real heroes. I mean, you know, we are celebrating uh, Women's Month or here in the US, uh, Women's Week. Um, you know, real heroes, you're truly amazing. Your artwork is uh, is extremely powerful. Again, uh, just looking at, at at all the paintings, it's it's your heart is touched. You, you're absolutely moved. You understand beyond words uh, and you feel the sadness. Uh, I heard many times the, the world depressed. Uh, in the same time, you you can envision the hopes, uh, the dreams, and, and and you feel for the hardship you are enduring. Um, so I can I cannot thank you enough for the courage for coming today with us um, to express yourself with your paintings, uh, for for showing us also your resilience, your strength. Uh, I think I want to, uh, I want all of us to leave also on a high note uh, that you all can be proud of what you are doing, uh, of your characters, your personalities. Um, and um, and I saw that Imran shared with uh, us in the chat, uh, his phone number uh, to assist, to help. Uh, so whatever we can, um, we, we understood your message, so whatever we can, I think uh, we'll, we'll try our best to uh, to help and to support. And I just would like to say something else. Uh, Angelica, a special um, hats off to you uh, personally, because this was being on the, you were, I felt I was, so maybe you, you felt the same thing. We were on the receiving end. Um, right. And, and it's quite difficult to, um, to ask the questions 
to uh, uh, look at the paintings and at the same time in receiving all the emotional uh, component of it uh, because it's uh, it's real it's 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 happening and again to all our panelists thank you thank you thank you um, and and Macfest once again congratulations. Yeah, thank, I would also like to give uh, thanks to Kasra Shiraz for giving me the opportunity to to meet those four Afghani artists. And uh, I would say uh, to me, it's been uh, I, to me and hopefully to all of, of our guests, um, guests, it has been a life changing webinar because you read all those things about Afghanistan in the newspapers you see it on tv and you know about the role of women in afghanistan but it really makes a huge difference uh, to meet those people uh, i mean in this webinar i can't say face to face but a face to voice and um yeah it has um changed me a lot and thank you to um for giving this opportunity, Kasra, to those uh, four artists uh, to present their work. And um, I would love to meet them and to talk to them in person. But uh, sadly, that's not possible. But um, their artwork has given me a tremendous insight into um, uh, their lives in Afghanistan and uh, their courage also to um, yeah, oppose the the Taliban rule, and um, yeah, it's it leaves me um, a different person, I would say, and I hope it is the same um, for everyone who has watched this webinar today. So once again, thank you to Kesra Shiraz, thank you to Macfest. I think you're doing a great job, Kesra by giving us uh, and all of our audience the opportunity to get to know Afghan artists on such a personal level. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you so much. Katazina will finish off for us, but I can't help but express my thanks to you, Angelica. You've done a brilliant job, absolutely. And we're gonna hold on to you to do something similar next year. Chris, I echo everything you've said. It was a demanding session in the way emotionally, and we learned a lot, but hats off to our four amazing artists, and they are absolutely amazing. I'm just so, so proud of them, and they should go away and really congratulate themselves, not just as artists, but as women for being resilient. And now I'm gonna hand back to Katazina. Thank you, Katazina, for your job at the back. Thank you so much to our lovely audience. Uh, thank you for participating, for sending your questions, uh, for sending your comments. Thank you so much to our artists. Uh, thank you to Angelica. Thank you to Chris and to Kezra. Um, please join us in the future. We've got uh, loads more events coming up. Uh, I've shared some uh, links in the chat. Um, and just you can just visit MacFest website. We've got all the links on the website and on Eventbrite. Thank you so much for today. Our next event is in conversation with another artist, Farva Moledina, um, on Tuesday, 14th of March, uh, six o'clock in the evening, UK time. Thank you so much and see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Ladies, Slam Alik and Warhamtula Barakat. Thank you, Imran. Thank you. Thank you, Chris from New York. <laughs> well I mean, done. And Angelica, well done. Yeah. You. <laughs> danke schön, Miss Angelica. Yeah, danke, danke. Auf Wiedersehen. Yes. Bye -bye. <laughs>